Welcome to Stab in the Dog Cinema. How can I help you today? Yeah, we had a little accident in the lobby. Someone tried to replicate the TV scene from A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. You know, welcome to prime time, bitch. That one didn't go very well. So for the time being, I'll be sorting you out from right here in the bar. Uh, do you have your loyalty stabber card? If you don't, you may want to go here to learn about it. If you do, then just remember to leave the name of the film you got and your social media handle and we will be sure to stamp your card. But let's get you sorted with the film. Okay, great. Would you like something that focuses on humans or monsters? Monsters, you go with your wild self. Are you more into vampires or werewolves? Vampires, that's what I would have picked. In that case today we have for you 2006's The Hamiltons. It's directed by Mitchell Altieri and Phil Flores who together are also known as the Butcher Brothers and it's written by them along with Adam Weiss. It's about four young adult siblings who try to fend for themselves after the death of their parents but they harbor some dark secrets which include abducting and killing strangers and feeding them to a mysterious thing living in their cellar. You know, for an independent film, this one surprised me. I genuinely enjoyed it. It's very low-key and the plot is also low-key and very unexpected. I thought I knew where this was going and turns out I hadn't a clue. I like that it surprised me and I like that it did something different with something so many are familiar with. Plus the dynamic of the characters was really interesting to watch. Happy to be of service. If you're interested, a sequel was released in 2012 called The Thompsons. If you like this one, you may want to consider checking that out too. Just doing my job. Your film is in Cinema 10 in 25 minutes. Can I get you something to eat or drink while you wait? Not a problem. Now, where did I put it? Werewolves, not usually my cup of tea, but you do you. For you, we have 2014's Wolves, which was written and directed by David Hayter. It's about a boy who is trying to find out about his family history and stumbles upon a town of lichens, as you do. Oh, you didn't want to hear my thoughts. No, no, it's okay. It's, it's not like you have to hear what I think about the film. I certainly don't want to keep you. No, it's okay. You go about your business. Are you sure? Well then, if you insist. I enjoyed this movie, even though it wasn't quite what I was expecting. The practical effects are comical and cheesy as hell, reminding me very much of the old Teen Wolf to the point it is hard to take seriously, despite having a serious story. I could have lived without the rape storylines, they just conflict rather harshly with this almost campy film. All that aside, I do enjoy the story and the performances in it, and I would probably watch it again because it is kind of fun. Thank you for letting me say my piece. Yes, your film is showing in Cinema 7. Oh, wow, <laughs> it's not playing for another 40 minutes. In that case, can I get you something at the mall? Coming right up. Humans, you're dark-sided. I like it. Which speaks to you more, city folk or forest dwellers? City folk, you should get out more, but for you today we have 2016's The Belco Experiment, which was directed by Greg McLean and written by none other than James Gunn. This is about a twisted social experiment where 80 Americans are locked in their high-rise corporate office in Bogota, Colombia, and ordered by an unknown voice coming from the company system to participate in a deadly game of kill or be killed. 
We here at the cinema are aware not many love this, but for some weird reason I personally enjoyed this. Maybe it was the soundtrack consisting of Spanish renditions of uplifting songs. Maybe it was the fact that one character I wanted to survive actually did. I love the acting and the pace, and sure puts a more gruesome spin on the cutthroat nature of corporate America. Reminded me very much of movies like Cube or House of Nine, so obviously it wasn't all that original, but I still enjoyed it. <laughs> but enough of that, your film is in Cinema 1 and starts in 4 minutes, so you better run on over, but don't worry, you can still come back here and enjoy a drink or two afterwards. No problem, enjoy your movie! Forest dwellers, huh? Not sure what that says about you, but your film is 2013's Jug Face. What? Oh, come on. <laughs> this happens sometimes. Ah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> As I was saying, this was written and directed by Chad Crawford Kinkle and follows a teen who is pregnant with her brother's child and tries to escape from a backwards community only to discover that she must sacrifice herself to a creature in a pit. Don't give me that look! I'm not the one who decided most films involving folks who live in the woods have to involve incest, cannibalism or both. But for what it's worth, this one is good. It's a really good small scale film. It's set in a tiny community removed from society and the way it's shot with a limited cast actually reflects the feeling of isolation and the fact it's slim pickings on who you're gonna shack up with. The horror in it isn't groundbreaking, but it's still effective. It's similar to other films that have addressed cults or communities that worship an entity like The Endless or The Wicker Man, for example. Great performances and is an overall interesting flick. Well, I certainly hope you enjoy it. Your film starts in 15 minutes in Cinema 2. Not a problem. Enjoy your movie.